Well, we are live. We are live. Coming to the matters. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hope y'all are having a wonderful evening, as well as we are. This time change has got us a little messed up. I feel like it's, it's been a long, a long day. day. Yep. At four o'clock, I could have went to bed. Yep. I think it's got everybody messed up. I think so too. It'll take us a couple of weeks to get acclimated back. The bad problem with with it is, is we don't have any time to garden in the afternoon after we get off work. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to take a major. I had to get up early. Yeah, I had to get up early and do it in the morning time mm -hmm. for a little while. Mm -hmm. So just to give everybody a little bit of update while everybody's jumping on of what we got trialing in the garden. We've got three things out there that I'm kind of excited about. I was going to mention. We got a new collar called Top Chop that we're trialing at. Top Chop is a good hybrid variety collar. But what makes it so special, it doesn't bolt really easy with the hot weather. Uh, top Bunch, which is our number one selling collar, dude, mm -hmm. which is a great one. It's a good one, but it, the only problem is it will bolt somewhat. Bolt means it's so got it in the garden or in trays? Got it in trays. Right now I'm going to put it in the garden first part of the week. But this Top Chop, turned i mean uh won't bolt in the heat so it lasts longer so it works really good for those slots in the late spring i guess it'll work good anytime but specifically in springtime mm -hmm. when it starts getting warm and this is kind of the weird thing about it if it gets cold on it like a really cold snap on it it'll turn purplish oh. which the commercial farmers hate but from the home garden standpoint i thought that would be really cool mm -hmm. You can still eat it. it yeah, just, it just turns a darker top, purplish top color. Which I thought this is a top chop color. color. Another thing that I got growing in the garden is Imperial Beach spinach, which is different for us.
You see me? Okay, come on. We'll just have to do it from the laptop. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, we had some technical issues there. Can everybody hear us now? Bingo. We're back up. We had to switch out. To the laptop. To the maybe. laptop. Maybe it'll work. Get everybody here as well. Yeah. Boy, technology and us don't get along sometimes. All right. Good deal. Tater Mater, where was I? Oh, I'm going to finish my thoughts here on this. It's, it's Peril spinach we got mm -hmm. growing, which is a large Italian type leaf spinach, which is a large leaf spinach. We got that trialing in the garden. Also, I've got something new that one of the seed breeders sent me by mistake. They said, They said, They said, and it is top secret, but it is a cross between kale and collards. Mm -hmm. You know what they call it? <laughs> Kalers. 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 So I got some Kalers planted in the trays, and we're going to be transplanting them in a few days. Kalers. Top secret cross between collards and kale. So that's the three things that I've got trialing right now in the garden. It's, it's growing pretty good. All right. So let's get to some questions. How about that? Tater Mater. Just got my strawberries in the ground. Going to take those advice and pick the runners and blooms off January 10th. Yeah, I think that is the day. Yeah, the middle of January, tater mater. Be fine. Somewhere in there. Be fine. Keep them seed supplies in stock for next garden season. How's that going? Yeah, we're, we're, they is some very unique stuff that we're having trouble get. Just really weird stuff. They is a, believe it or not, they is a red sweet corn. I've been trying to get for two years now. Still can't get it, but for the most part, we can get everything. It's just some weird stuff that's out of stock. We got a sugar snap pea that we won't be able to get this year. Certain varieties are just going to be short. And what we'll do is we'll pick up another variety that's real similar to that. Kelly says, so heavy. She loves her electric pressure canner. I do. I have used it almost every day. That and my dehydrator has been going Yes, you have, because every night I hear that dehydrated going. Mm, yeah. like a the Roselle is Roselle. And, and dehydrating. Cajun Martin Farm. Good evening, Mr. Craig and Ms. Sheila. Well, good evening to you as well. Yep. Run out of daylight today with the time change. We uh, just about got dark here, what, about six? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hello from the thumb of Michigan, Mary. Well, welcome. Thumb we got Michigan. Roselle tea that we're we drinking. Do. I'm you want to talk, right you want talk about the Roselle tea a minute? Roselle. I've been reading a lot about Roselle. Very interesting. Uh, we just are starting to harvest ours. Mm -hmm. Now, we're in the deep, deep south. What triggers Roselle to bloom is daylight temperature, length of daylight in the day. And that's the reason so many of you have troubles because y'all live northern, northern from here, and your daylight is not as long as what ours is. Short. Short. So it's not as short. It's shorter. There's a short well, than our What triggers it to bloom is the shortening. Yes, yes. Not the length. Right. Long. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. But the southern the southern you live, the better off you are growing or is ill. Right. Yeah. Last year we didn't have any. Right. So this year I'm kind of mm -hmm. gathering a little early. Yep. Terry, what's up? It's Greg and Sheila. We are doing fine this evening. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Charlene's from Southeast Texas. We got us these new, how about this right here? Y'all ain't never seen this before. These yeah. new coffee cups. Tea cups. Tea cups. And you put your tea thing in here to the side. Right, when you're through with it. When you're through with it, you get through, just stick it in there. You bought these at a little, let me see, I got a little craft store there in the mountains the other day. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. About a stand and need a bottle from Huntsville, Alabama. Having problems with white flies, I think, on our turnip greens. Should we pull them or just what? Treat them. Um, late in the afternoon, early morning. I've had, I pulled up one part of my broccoli garden today. I pulled it up and I had white flies on it. I had thought they'd already crashed out, but they're still active. Um, I would spray them with something real. Real mild horticulture oil, neem oil, anything like that. Just do it late morning, late in the afternoon. Or if you want to use something like Bugbuster too, it'll have a little bit of residual to it. 
But uh, on turnip rings, I'd probably stick to something like name order or horticultural. Order. Rick says he racked in, raked in. Oh, it may be right. It may be raked. I think, I think it is raked in. Lady Felicia tarped it 24 hours later, 24 hours later, half plot, full water, and tarped by next morning, full stand. Oh, my gosh. Just like a roll of AstroTurf. Hoss tools are really good standards for seeds. Well, thank you, Rick. I got a great stand of Super Blue for Celia as well. I'm excited about it's it. It's gorgeous. It is. It's pretty. It's just like he says. It has that, just creates a blanket on mm -hmm. it. Yep. Rita says, good evening from the rainy South Carolina. We need some rain, Rita. Oh, bad. Yep. Bad. East of Florida. So the Roselle. Do you know what they originally grew it for? Uh, I remember you telling me, but I'm going to let you tell everybody. So the stalk is fibrous, and they originally grew it for sugar sacks. For the fiber? Mm -hmm, to make fiber. sugar sacks? To make sugar sacks and twine, like jute twine. Well, if you've ever grown Roselle before, you know what she's talking about. When you get that, ready to get yeah. rid of it, it's, it's, makes a, it's like a small tree. It is. You pretty much have to chop it down like you mm -hmm. do okra. It's the, the ours gets a lot worse, bigger than okra. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've got some in two places. I was seeing what the difference was in your garden and then in a native area down along Fence Road. So if you was really industrious, you could take your roselle stems, stems and beat them down where the fiber would be pliable and you could to weave you some baskets. baskets. <laughs> I wish I had time for that. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? It would be cool. Yeah. Dustin Dillon is 90 to 100 a day. And, whew, is 90 to 100 a day enough to bulb oh, out God. short day ends if planted in Augusta? Um, in August, in zone 5B. Oh, yeah. August is going to be no, 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 no. I wouldn't think so. I, no. <laughs> just I no. Think, yeah, I just don't <laughs> think it would. I don't think it would work for you. I mean, let us know what you think. I think you're going to make onions, but I don't think you're going to. What about gonna... in a greenhouse? No, I don't no. think it's going to matter. I don't think because it's length of the day also that triggers that. So you're going to make onions, but I don't think you're going to make these real big onions. So, Dustin, I would probably, oh, gosh. You know what I mean? 5B, I would just wait till uh, springtime and plant. Let us know how it turns out because I never say never. But I think you're going to be better off to plant your Long day onions in springtime. Hey, be leaner. My greenhouse plants are being eaten a lot by white flies and aphids. Can you help? Horticulture oil would be my first choice. Neem would probably be my second choice. They, we got another one that's a pyrethrin. Oh, what's the name of it? Is it takedown? Yeah. No, no. Garden fruit tree spray, fruit tree spray, and I know the, the name's misleading. It would work wonderful on your uh, your vegetables. It is pyrethrin with canola oil as a carrier, so that would work good. My first solution would be straight horticultural oil. Morels. I live in Florida, wondering about weed berries. Should I use black or white? Oh man. So this is what the commercial guys do, and I know this may or may not help you. In the springtime and in the fall of the year, they use black. In the middle of the summertime, they use white. And what they do is they have a type of paint that they actually put on the tractor and go through there, excuse me, and spray it around July really? mm -hmm, before they plant the, hmm. the crops, and they plant, they spray it white. So. If I just had to go with one, I would go with, especially in Florida, I will probably go with black because you need you need that black in the springtime and the fall time to heat up your soil. It's going to go against you a little bit in July and August, but you're not going to be doing a lot of gardening in July and August anyway in Florida. So I would go with the black. If I had to go with one. The what? The black. The black. Mm -hmm. Hey, sweet people. Hello, Kathy. I dumped about six inches of compost on my garden here in Kentucky. That nice clay and rock. What's your thoughts on tilling it in with the clay or no till? Yeah, I till it in. I till it in, Kathy, and uh, try to work it into the soil. 
I think it'll do better hip working if you clay like that. Now, if you was going to practice some of this no-till garden that they talk about, we just lay on top, maybe. But I think you better off till it in. Mm -hmm. Lyle says, just pulled some of my Tom onions today. They are great. Mm, we're just that Lyle, they are. We just planted ours about two, two weeks, weeks ago, ago, and they're already up about like this right here. Mm -hmm. I don't see that. You know, we had some questions, some people that got some of the limited we had that they said when they got them, they was all dried. Well, they appeared <laughs> to be all dried. Yes, they do. They appear to be like you didn't receive anything. But this is a little trick. Pull them apart and plant them. And boom, they come up. We, of the ones we planted and ones we planted just look like, exactly like the ones you got, we got a 100% stand off ours. They will sprout. They look dead. They do look dead. But plant them and they'll come right out. So like garlic. Yeah, yeah. it's worse than garlic. They'll yeah. eat swivel up a little worse than that. Did you sell out? We've got just that very few left. Very, very few. But you have to call. Yeah. Yeah, will the dibbler fit on the high art wheel hoe? You have to have two brackets. Carrie, you say no. I think it only fits on the dog. I know, but you could make it work. <laughs> Though you'd have to call us and we'd have to work something out with you. They, it, I'd have to add a special part in there for it. The systems that we got will not. My mind's always working here. You know what I mean? <laughs> The ones that we have online will not, but if you bought an extra bracket, we can make it work. If you're interested, email us and I'll, uh, I'll fix you up. At what time after planting carrots or what size do you thin your carrots? So when mine, the tops get about two inches and they're big enough for me to actually pinch them with my finger, I thin them out. You don't want it too big because it's going to mess up the roots of the others. So it's 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 quite a timing thing there. It is. Have it you is. thinned yours? I have a little bit. I need to do it again. I think yours is about the right size. Yeah, I think so too. Terry Aylard, I'm going to run the drip tape next spring, 30 by 40 plot with a small injection tank work or do I need a two-gallon tank? Thanks. We don't sell but one tank anymore. The one we sell is a one gallon. We made an improvement on the tank two or three years ago. We got a lot better tank now, but we only have one size. But it will work on a 30 by 40 plot. And uh, we got some new things coming out, Terry, this next year, come January, on people that's got plots like you on 30 by 40 plots. And uh, it's going to be interesting. But, yeah, 30 by 40 plot irrigation. In fact, I got a 30 by 15 plot right now that I'm doing an experiment with and I'm using fertilizer injector on it. Went ahead and ordered my seed stock from you guys today. Vidalia, Georgie. Jared, we will be in your neck of woods tomorrow. We'll have a truck up there in Glenville, Georgia, picking up some tomato plants. That's where our onion, onion plants. plants. That's where our <laughs> onion plants are grown at is in the is it, it is Glenville. Glenville? I don't know. That. Yeah, it's right out from Vidalia. I believe the name of it. But uh, folks are very grow our onion plants. We'll be going up there every next four weeks. We'll be going every weekend or Monday morning. So thank you, Jared. Thank you for your uh, seed purchase. We love our Georgia folks. Johnny says, I got all my seeds from Hoss Tools two weeks ago. Thank you. Johnny, we got a few new things. It's going to be kind of peppering out and... Uh, the next four or five weeks, we hope to have them all by January 1st, but we don't have a lot, but we do have a few new seats. We just You'll be signed up for our email newsletter. Just keep a uh, watch out on it. We'll be announcing some of the, um, some of the things we've got coming out. We got a sale coming up. Thanksgiving too, do what? So what did you say? Oh, they go. What? 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 I can't tell secrets. Uh, I knew you could. Was whoever told you you messed up. Really? Yeah. You can keep a secret. It's all those people you tell that yeah, can't. Yeah, it's everybody else on here that can't. Yeah. yeah. If you hadn't signed up for the email list, you, you got to be signed you up. You might need to be signed up around Thanksgiving. Randy says, do you work pepper plants into the garden or do you remove them from the garden completely? 
Pepper plants and tomato plants, I remove all together, Randy. They harbor diseases somewhat, and they I, I don't work them back in. If it's a leafy-type vegetable, a brassica, I'll work it back in. But I normally pull my tomatoes and my peppers and put them in the compost bin. Mm. Is there a fast disconnect you can get for the injector? I want to use it between two different gardens. Yeah, any, I think we sell one. A horse quick connect. I think you do. Yep. Uh, it, what it is, it's a brass quick connect. It's just water hose fittings. Excuse me. Excuse me, this one was ill. Yeah, we do, I'm almost positive we do sell that. It's a quick connect. But if you if you can't find it on our side, it's just water hose brass quick connect. Yep. And Will, Will's on here. Our horse guard is doing awesome. That twister cauliflower was showing out. That twister is a good one. Got my dibble wheel last week and looking forward to using it on horse onions come in. Thanks, Will at Dixie Meadows Farm. Will, I was going to tell you one thing. You was talking about that green magic the yeah, other day. Have a yeah, press. we do have the hog press. Will, the green magic is wonderful. And I like to use green magic early in the fall and then I like to use spring. But I want you to try one for your wintertime slot there is Godzilla. Man, you talk. That that's what I planted last year in the wintertime. You're talking like a, a huge head. It makes a huge head. Uh, it's not quite as heat tolerant as green magic. That's the reason I like to use it in that slot in the middle there but it's great greetings from tampa bay enjoying my house bella rosa tomatoes and they're still coming in mm. wow thank you d i was, we was worried about y'all folks down in tampa bay i'm uh i'm assuming your garden made it through the hurricane okay yeah that bella rosa is a great fall tomato for florida Is it <laughs> zone six too late to put toxic topsoil in? Is that topsoil? Yeah, no, not topsoil. Totsy, topsoil. Yeah, uh, I think it is. I think it is. She you messed that one all the way up. Now, I think you could, you could possibly put some spinach in if you protect it. That's going to be about it in zone six reason I say that is I had a conversation with a market farmer the other day and he was telling me all that. He's in zone six and he said, you still put some spinach in, but you better protect it. So Tyra says, my late season tomatoes are not even blushing. Can you advise? Oh, zone eight. Woo. Our neighbor. Our neighbor had to pull his up and he had all grooms on his. There's something about this daylight temperature that just didn't ripen with it this fall. I don't know what it is, but we didn't have really good tomatoes. I still got a great crop of cherry tomatoes that have that won't turn. I don't I, turn. I guess it's the daylight temperature. It got so short so quick or so I don't know what it is. The neighbor, we actually put up some uh, green dill tomatoes today because we didn't want to yep. let them go to waste. Yep. <laughs> uh. Ty. Oh, hey, Ty says, hey, Greg, and Mom Hoss is Connor from HOA. Hey, Connor, hope you're doing <laughs> well. All right, Mac. Is it possible to cut peppers back heavy most over winter for a head start in the spring? Mac, if you're in nine, zone nine, maybe. I've heard of people doing that before in the hearing zone eight. You just about can't over winter peppers. If you got them in a container, you can pull them in and, and get away with it. But you'll need to be in zone nine or ten to be able to do that, Matt. I actually, um, I'm gonna pull mine out this week. Mm -hmm. I cut them all back today. Yep. Harvest them. Made some, started some more pepper sauce. Yep. So uh, I I don't think it's worth the trouble unless you down in deep floor deep south. Rick C. Why surprised me with some Mesa hardneck garlic. Unfortunately, I've never grown hardneck garlic. Is it doable in Texas? Not a. I've got it in the fridge. No, nonetheless, figured something else we could eat. Oh man, Rick, I hope the best for you. But I don't <laughs> think he's gonna be successful. But let us know. But you're doing the right thing. Put them in the refrigerator. Stratify. Stratification. Leave them in there for a little while. About and, six uh, weeks. Yeah. We just don't get enough cold weather down here in 
eight, nine B to grow those type garlic. So hey, let us know. Down on the homestead, I just started organic turmeric root in my greenhouse in zone 9A of Cala, Florida. Any tips on growing them successfully? We have that's something I want to do, but we have never done it. So what's to, on our to-do list is to start working with turmeric and ginger a little bit more. We don't know. We've got some friends that grow it, but I don't know very little at all about it. But I would like to know more about turmeric root because we use them a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you take it twice we a day. We take it twice a day. In the appeal, so it'd be great to have. So, no, I, I hate we can't give you no good information there, but we're extremely interested in it as well. So, do you care that Thai Roselle? I heard it blooms in August. I can't seem to get regular Roselle to make it here. Good question. Yes, yeah, a great question. We're going to try to source some seeds. Seeds for that is extremely hard to uh, to source. I'm going to a meeting in January, and we'll hopefully there find some uh, new seed vendors so we can get some of that. We would love to add it. Mm -hmm. It's on our bucket list. Do you ever plan on getting stevia seeds on your website? Mm -hmm. Jonathan, that's another good question. I, we probably should look into that. We've got a couple new vendors that we're working with uh, on those weird kind of seeds, but stevia, stevia is the mm -hmm. Just look into that. Thank you for the suggestion there. So it's talking about stevia. There was a study I read about stevia and roselle and taking it twice a day and how it helps to prevent and treat diabetes. Huh. Just thought that was interesting. There's a lot of health benefits. Yeah. Will my cutting mustard cover crop survive a mm -hmm. seven winter? It's on seven winter. Iffy. Donnie, it's going to be very iffy. Uh, if it starts bolting or starts blooming at any given time, I'll go ahead and cut it in. Uh, that's probably when you, what you need to do anyway is uh, just as soon as it starts bolting, go ahead and cut it in. Or if you see that you're going to have something down in the teens, some, some weather coming in the teens, I'll go ahead and cut it in. Other than that, I think you'll be all right maybe into the 20s, but you're going to get in those teens. That's where you're going to run into trouble. Sheila, can you can sweet potatoes without curing them? I guess she's got some this weekend, and I don't want to wait to can them. I do not know. I have never canned sweet potatoes. I would say not. I would say you need them to uh, you need to cure them. What happens in the cure process? If you don't, they're going to be really bland. For them, when they cure, those carbohydrate car starches starches in there convert to sugars. So that's what makes, makes them sweet. sweet. So I would try to uh, cure them first. I think you'll be better served to do that. Interesting. Oh, oh, I impressed you, didn't I, girl? Yeah. I'm in zone. This is Carrie McAllister, zone seven around Memphis. Can I still plant onions? If so, can I get some from you? Carrie, this, you're right there on the line. Man, you're right there on the line. So you can go either way. You can go with short day or you can go with uh, intermediate day type onions. Uh, yes, you can get some from us. We're going to have some. You can go ahead and order some. Uh, probably be a good thing to do is give it a try. And if you see they start struggling from too much cold, you can always replant them. But if you have a mild winter, I think you'll be all right. You're right there on the line. So short day to uh, intermediate day. Karen says, will sea potatoes be available for pre-order? Well, that's a great question. Sure. Karen, I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. December 1st, we will start pre-selling sea potatoes. We've already booked our seed potatoes for next year. And the reason we do it so early is for you guys down in zone nine and 10 to get yours in Jan January. So our first shipment will be in the middle of January. And then we'll have another shipment come in in February for you guys up here in zone eight and above. So yeah, we will have them available. So first of December. 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 Hello, Greg. Enjoy your show. Hello, Greg and Sheila. I'm the true garden newbie. I garden with raised beds. How do I check my soil? Kit from a box store, take a sample. Do I sample every raised bed or just sample one? If you uh, 
if you put the same type of soil in every raised bed I just sampled, I'd get me a little bit of each one and do an overall sample from the raised bed. I would prefer to use the extension HC over everybody else. I think it's the best, best buy there. I mean, it's those uh, little kits from the big box stores, not very accurate. And for, I know here in Georgia, I think it's six bucks. You can do the extension HC. So that's the best way to do a soil sample, in my opinion. Uh, but I would just do, if you're using the same type of mix, I would just give me a little bit of a raised bed to do one soil sample for all your raised beds. Just don't get one raised bed, but get a little bit of out of all of them. And that'll give you an idea. If you have the same. If you have the same mix. Because really, there's three things that you're, that you're sampling for. You're sampling for pH, and you're sampling for potassium level, and phosphorus level. That's just three things you're going to get out of this. So... Frank says, what's the best way to red and green tomatoes indoors? Oh, Frank, uh, I'll give you, the, I'll tell you the best. We normally put them in the windowsill. However, a lot of people will say put them in a, a bag. A paper like bag. A paper bag, and uh, and they're ripen that way. They do release some kind of gas that helps them ripen. So a lot of people will put them in paper bags and then put them on a windowsill or whatever and do that. We always just put them on the windowsill. So. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Greg and Sheila. What is the shipping schedule on the pre-ordered onion plants? We are in zone 8A, Eastern North Carolina. Yeah, Greg Blanton, we're going to be shipping out. We're going to start tomorrow afternoon, matter of fact, and we're going to be shipping out uh, tomorrow and Tuesday, and we're going to be shipping out the following Monday and Tuesday. So we should have the majority of the orders shipped out within the next two weeks. Proof Garden's been trying a bunch of different pepper sauces with some different fruit types like nectarine, plum, apple. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Had a bumper crop of peppers this year with about 15 plants, thankful. You know, that's one of the fun things to do is pepper sauces. It is. You've really gotten into it this year. We'll talk a little bit about so the, one you, some, the yeah. one you had come off Friday night, the fermented one. The fermented one, yeah. So I've really been experimenting with fermenting the peppers. And it's mostly sweet peppers, and then there's just a few jalapeno and the Mad Hatter. Um, let them sit for about four weeks, blend mm -hmm. them up. I think there's a video out there on one, on the playlist that I showed how to do it in detail, and it's just so tasty. Yeah, the ferment to me adds another level of complexity to yeah. the flavor of the pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. About it, Ben. Ben all says I picked the half bushel basket of Carolina Reapers. Wow. Whoa. This weekend, so I can relate to the never ending hum of the dehydrator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sheila's been wanting her one of them harvest right. Harvest right. Freeze dryers. And they've got them five hundred dollars off. I don't have any promotion or anything, but I did see where they got them off in November. It's wow. been really tempting. Yeah. Really tempting. They take up a lot of room. We've had a conversation where we would put that monster. We saw out. one when we went to the mountains. We in Clayton, last Georgia. Week. They had one at the Ace Hardware store. At the Ace Hardware store, which it was was a large one. I think I want the medium. But um I've been holding back pulling that trigger, but yeah, it's so tempting. Just think how much roselle I could do at one time. Oof, girl, what you talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. Johnny says I'm having problems germinating green leaf mm. lettuce. Man, Johnny. Uh, make sure it stays wet, but yet make sure it doesn't stay too wet. So if you're using a tray, make sure it's got drainage in the bottom of it because it's kind of a now normally, and I say normally because I never say never. Remember we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Germinating green leaf lettuce is normally one of the easiest things to germinate, but it can be temperamental to staying too wet and the seed rotting, or not staying wet enough. So you want to keep it damp in there but you don't want it sitting in moisture because that seed will rot. Other than that, we normally get lettuce seed to pop, pop, pop. But I, I was trying some in the back in a grow bag under a lot, and I kept it too wet. It that will happened. rot, yep. Tater Mater. <laughs> 
Can y'all just come to Louisiana to teach me everything? Since there is to know, I think that'd be easier than blowing up this comment section. <laughs> Wish we could, Tater Mater. We love Louisiana. We was a few weeks ago. We was in uh, Southern Louisiana at ooh, at fishing. Oh, that went a couple of weeks ago. Well, a couple of months ago. <laughs> a couple of months ago. What's the we got to? Oh, what's the name of that town? Oh, Anyhow, it was below New Orleans down there at the You're tip down at there. the end of nowhere. The end of nowhere. We went down there and went fishing. Red for fish. red fishing. Yeah, we had a big time. A we love Louisiana. You'll come to me. I had a senior moment there. This will come to me a little bit. That name of that town. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hoss family. Can we talk about teal, no teal, and cover crop? What to do? Zone 5B. Love the channel. Thank you, Melinda. Melinda, Melinda, Melinda. I need some more teal. Uh, Years ago, I got into this, and this was years ago. This must have been 15, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. I got into this thought process that I could do no-till cover crop and plant in the strips. And I did a lot of work with it. I mean, a lot of work with it. It did not work for me at all. Now, that being said, just because it didn't work for me, it won't work for some of you guys. But I spent uh, many hours trying to figure out how to work with no-till cover crops, and I could not get it to work in a garden situation. So my thought is to take cover crops, work them back into the soil, and then go that route. I, that's what works best for me. But yet we're in zone eight, you're in zone five, maybe different. But that is my thoughts here. And it's not, I'm not telling you that because we tried to discourage no-till. Hey, if it works for you, that's wonderful. If you lived in Alaska, I could see it working for you. But down here where we live, Man, I just can't make it work. And I have tried and I've tried. I've tried every way I knew possible. It just didn't work. Mm -hmm. So there you have it, Linda. Alabama girl. I'm in West Alabama. Thank you for all your videos. I've learned so much. I've gotten better. Crop, I'm in Zone 8, Bibb, Perry County. Yeah, we love our Alabama folks. Thank you. Good evening from Kansas, Kansas. Sundown Farm. Oh, good evening, Kansas. Censor this. Good evening, all y'all. How things going in South Georgia? Garden was difficult for me this year. Drought, pest, deer really did me. Yeah, those are all difficult situations. We're coming out. So we try here at Hoss, we try to look at talking to people and look at what their pain points is. And two of them that you mentioned there, drought and pest we try to do what we can there so we come out with these drip irrigation systems that helps you with the drought with pests we try to offer you solutions there as far as sprays organic and non-organic the deer one is a really really tough one we don't offer any solution for that however we've talked to a lot of our friends that have done some things with some fencing that has worked and this is what the guys tell me they put up a fence and they put another fence up that kind of comes off like that and it's something about the deer's perception of death that keeps the deer from jumping over these fence. You may want to do a little research on it because I'm not an authority on deer fencing. But I've talked to several people that have been successful with that type of fencing. And fencing is going to be your only option for You know, deer in North Georgia, we saw a lot of deer. We wondered Everywhere. how anybody could garden. They were just like in the yard. You could almost walk up to them. So I walked one morning a mile down the road by myself early one morning and they were deer. I can't, I don't know how many I counted. And I thought that because I seen several little garden spots mm -hmm. tilled up, man, my, I can just imagine what a tragic it would be about it trying be, to garden. Yeah. Yep. Ah, down ones. We love, love our freeze dryer. Just got raw eggs on a few minutes ago. Also did some freeze dry s'mores. Yeah. What size did you get? And do you wish you've got a bigger one? Or a smaller one. Or a smaller one. I'm assuming they got the harvest right. Is that the only brand out there? I have not looked at any others. I'm sure there is, but that's the one I see most of. Frank says, Greg, those video shorts you put out are terrific. Thank you, Frank. We do what we can. We just got in the short game not too long ago. Grand Isle, Tater Mate. No, what Grand Isle? Man, I knew he was going to bring us back. <laughs> the town we went to, Venus. Venus, Venus yeah. Louisiana. That's where it was at. Yeah. Yep. This is one of the most valuable channels on YouTube, in my opinion. Jane. Johnny, thank you, buddy. We appreciate that. 
Oh man, Jonathan Prime here. I got I'm gonna move over to this one side here because I ain't thought about this right here. Jonathan Prime says motion activated sprinklers work well for deer. I've seen that now that he's that would that. be I mentioned I fence seen. was your only solution. That might also work. Thank you, Jonathan, for that. Yeah. So a placement. Will y'all be coming back to Petals Meet and Greet again next year? I love to know about more homesteading events. We don't know. We hadn't got anything planned. We got a lot of friends over in Alabama, a lot of them. So we, we love the opportunities to go over there. I don't know if they're there. having one. I don't know. I either. haven't heard if they're having But one if we get the opportunity to visit our friends over there, we definitely will. Uh, just dig it farms, Cog Hill, and all those guys. And now. Wes is over there. Yeah, Wes and Angie's over there. Yeah. And then the Head Family Farm. Oh, yeah. If y'all hadn't checked out the Head Family Farm, they are a new YouTube channel. I say new. Six eight months old. Yeah. They're making splashes over there. They man, they and Eleanor. Eleanor, they're precious. But you got to check them at Head Family Farm. Adams Greenhouse. Hey what's up? There. What's up? Zone six, Ohio. We just planted two hundred more cloves of garlic. Never oh. too late. Wow. <laughs> So Adams Greenhouse, tell me when, and I've already asked your, your neighbor up there, but tell me when you will be planting your onions, your, your spring onions, because you're in zone six. I, I'm thinking you're on the verge between intermediate day and long days, what I'm thinking you are, but confirm that if you would. You want to see if Will knows what he's on there? I mean, Mike knows what he's on there? Uh, we'll, we'll test. <laughs> test. I actually forgot what Mike told me. We'll see what Kenny says. Uh, yep. Carol Henley, I love your drip irrigation kits. The videos really helped me set mine up, and it worked great. I bought more for next season. Thank you, Carol. We got some new things coming out first of year on drip irrigation we're working on, so we're excited about that. And our drip irrigation kits that we're coming out with for next year is going to be for smaller gardens. Mm -hmm. And raised beds? No, probably, but I'm having some issues there. Okay. I spent all day Friday working on that, but yeah, mm. yeah, you didn't know that, did you? No, I thought you was napping. Nope, I was working on <laughs> drip irrigation kits, by the way. In your, in your dreams, you was dreaming, I was about dreaming it. about it. Yeah, I was dreaming. About I thought it. I found you in the chair yeah. napping. I was resting, I wasn't napping. <laughs> I live in North Georgia. You didn't stop by. Hey, I did think about looking some people up and surprising people. Susie, we will next time. We, we were with uh, my mother and father and sister and brother-in-law, so we were kind of limited on what we could do. Yeah, it was a wonderful she weekend the, with family. <laughs> <laughs> the wildlife comes right down to my driveway. Deer, turkey, yotes. And, what's a yote? Oh, yeah. coyotes. Yeah. That's local slang for coyotes. Yotes. yotes. Oh, I'll start using that. Yeah. We got some yotes in our backyard. I love North Georgia. It's beautiful up there. Proof says, I've been growing my elephant garden zone 8B with my own stock for almost five to six years. You know, this is the great thing about elephant garlic um, and our tom onions and regular garlic as well. If you're successful growing them, you can keep your own seed stock for years and years. Your own, you can do your sweet potatoes the same way. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can grow your own slips every year. So a lot of these things that that we encourage people to grow, if you can keep them in your family for years and years and years, you never have to have no more inputs. You can continue to grow your own. Boom, 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 boom. Connie Hernandez says, Tracy at Just Dig Farm says, yes, they plan on to meet. Ah, oh, well, good deal. Then we'll good probably deal. be there. Yep. Yeah. Down on the homestead, we have a medium. Yes, I guess we could have gotten a large. Oh, the things you can do. Uh, uh, the harvest run. Oh, okay, okay. Holler at me later. Have okay. some video on freezer. Cool, yeah. I guess we could have gotten a large. I asked what size. I know. I'm just trying to think if they like their medium or not. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, you need to check into that. The solar motion... Lights. Huh. Work with the deer. Yep. Irish spring soap. I've never heard of soap. I've heard the soap thing. I didn't know how well it worked, but I've heard the Irish spring soap shavings. Yep. I'm like you. I didn't know how well it worked. I can see the the motion lights and the uh, sprinklers working. You know, our neighbor has a big 
not whatever lot. You reckon that's why we don't have any problems? I don't know. We just never had any problem with deer in our garden. We got them across the road. We've never had them on our garden. Is German and elephant garlic in stock? Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. We sold out in no time. Yeah, we're out of both of them. We can't get, we, we're we limited on what we can get, and we sell out. We sell out pretty quick. We sold a lot of elephant garlic this year, a lot of it. The white German yep. went fast. It did. Any time that you get a notification on from us, and it's talking about elephant garlic for German, go ahead and get it because it goes quick. Y'all like catfish up in Georgia? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We actually have a pond stock with catfish. And we feed them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Everybody is quick. I don't think I'm on the email list. I should probably send Johnny. Yeah, you got sure. to sign up for the email list. So this is the deal. We have one of the best gardening emails for the Southern United States gardener out there, in my opinion. And we're probably going to be doing, we may be stepping up our game and doing more emails. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. Carrie's like, Carrie's like what? Also, uh, another thing, too, is we have the SMS where we can you can receive texts on your mm -hmm. phone. So you can sign up for that as well. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh man! How did y'all do in your southern peas? Since for this man, we had a wonderful crop. I picked some again yesterday. I yep. said I was going to quit, but I haven't. Yep. And Absolute. I still think there's some more. Yeah, a great crop. If you're going to plant zipper peas or any other type of cow pea, excuse me, plant them in the fall. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Let's wrap things up. I think it was more down on homestead. Let's see what she said. Oh yeah, let's see there. Oops. I don't know what I did. I love the medium. Seriously, it's plenty big for my husband and I preparing stuff for a family. And the drip pit's a game changer. Hmm. She says she'll send you a message. All cool. right. Cool. Yeah. That's what we need to know what size to get because we were struggling with that. Laura says, should I plant my rose east to west, north to south? Does it matter? So if you plant north to south, you will never be shaded out if you don't have trees close by. If you plant from west uh, to east, you possibly could have some shade sometimes. So you get more sunlight. So how is my raised bed garden planted? Your raised bed garden is planted. What do you mean? What has it planted? Is it? I mean, I know it's planted. Is it east to west? It's east to west, right? No, it's north to south. No, it's north to south. Because I've just figured out why the strawberries do better on one end than the other. And it's that pecan tree back there. That's right. That's right. So if you don't have any trees, always plant north to south. If you have trees, it just doesn't matter because you got to go with what your trees shed out. But a normal situation, this goes for greenhouses as well. I just learned this not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Always put your greenhouses up and always plant north to south and you'll get a little bit more sunlight. That's why one of my sides of my raised beds don't do as mm -hmm. well. That's right. I'll count that tree. Mm -hmm. Yep. In the wintertime, it does okay. It's the summertime. Yep. Well, it was a wonderful time hanging out with y'all tonight. Sorry Tom. about our technical Yeah, I'm sorry about our time. You know, hanging out, doing the, uh, doing the live, hanging out with gardeners. We like to talk garden. One more. Johnny says, can you show us goat fingering? I never know what I'm looking for. It's right there. Oh, ah, there it is. And just a little tidbit, this is going to be changing for the holidays. Yeah, it won't be a goat. It might be something green. Yeah. Adam says, I, by the way, we planted channel strawberries today, too. Really? I thought it would have been too late for you to plant strawberries today. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you all for hanging out with us. It was good. See we you got, next time. We got to go get Rested it for tomorrow because we got onions coming in tomorrow. Gotta go get onions. Yep. Thank y'all.